Hey guys, the objective of today's video is to go through an example covering the ultimate capacity of a pile group as well as the settlement of a pile group. So here we have a group of 9 piles here with a spacing of 3 meters between each pile from center to center. These piles are cast in situ and the diameter of each pile is 0 0.6 meters. The piles have also been driven into stiff clay and the soil has an undrained cohesion of 100 kPa, a unit weight of 20 kN per meters cubed, a soil modulus of 20 megapascals, and the piles also have a modulus of 20,000 megapascals. And we're interested in determining the ultimate capacity of the pile group assuming no interaction between piles the load required to cause block failure of the entire group and from the minimum of the two values that we have found in part A and part B we, we can then determine the maximum allowable force that can be applied to the pile group and finally we need to also determine the settlement of the pile group so let's start off with part A so the ultimate capacity of one pile PU is equal to the sum of the total shaft resistance and the total base resistance. And these terms can be expanded to FSAS as the shaft resistance multiplied by the area of the shaft plus FB multiplied by AB. The base resistance multiplied by the area of the base. FS can be re rewritten as alpha CU and AS can be rewritten as pi DL plus FB can be rewritten as CUB multiplied by N dash C and we have the area of the base again. So to find alpha, firstly we need to know what CU is which is 100 kPa. Now going to this chart if we project upwards from 100 and across, that gives us an, a value of alpha of 0 0.5. So that's 0 0.5 times 100 times pi. The diameter of each pile is 0 0.6 meters. And the length of each pile is 6 meters also. Plus now the, co the cohesion of the soil stays the same below the base of the piles, so that's 100. And now to find N dash C, first determine our length to diameter ratio, so 6 over 0 0.6 which is 10. And that's bigger than 4, so that gives us an N dash C value of 9, multiplied by the area of the base, so that's pi multiplied by 0 0.6 squared divided by 4 because we have a circular cross-sectional area. This works out to be 820 kilonewtons and this is the ultimate axial capacity for a single pile. So to find the capacity of the entire group we just multiply this value by the number of piles we have. So that's 9 piles so 9 times 820, that gives us a value of 7,380 kilonewtons. Let's, let's now move on to part B. So the load required to cause block failure of the entire group. So we again we have PU equal to PS plus PB. Now since we're considering the pile group as a block now, a single block, we need to determine the width of the block in order to be able to find the area of the shaft and the area of the base. So this horizontal distance here, I'll call that B, that's equal to the spacing between each pile from centre to centre, so 3 plus 3 plus half the, half the pile diameter on each side, so that adds up to 0 
So B is equal to 2 times 3 plus 0 0.6. And that gives us 6.6 .6 meters. Now because of the soil which is in between each pile, the block undergoes soil to soil shear. So therefore the adhesion is equal to the cohesion which is 100 kPa. So the total shaft resistance PS is equal to CA multiplied by AS, the area of the shaft, so that's 100 multiplied by now because we're considering a block it is now a rectangular prism or a cube so that's 6 times 6.6 .6. that's the area of one face multiplied by 4 and that gives us 15,840 kilonewtons Now to find the total base resistance, that's CUB multiplied by N dash C multiplied by the area of the base. So the length to diameter ratio, that's 6 over 6.6 .6, which gives us 0 0.9. And this is less than 4. So therefore N dash C is equal to 5.6 plus 0 0.85 L on D and this works out to be 6.37 so going back to PB that's 100 multiplied by 6.37 multiplied by the area of the base so that's 6.6 .6 times 6.6 .6. so therefore PB is equal to 27,747.72 kilonewtons so the ultimate axial capacity of the block is equal to PS and PB the sum of these two and that works out to be 43,587 kilonewtons so going back to part C we want to determine the maximum allowable force So if you recall, for a group of floating piles, the ultimate capacity of the pile group is taken to be the minimum of the capacity of the entire block versus the number of piles multiplied by the capacity of a single pile. So in this case, the minimum value is 7,380 so therefore PU is equal to 7380 kilonewtons and if our factor of safety is 2 our maximum allowable force is equal to PU divided by F so 7380 on 2 that works out to be 3,690 kilonewtons. Finally, for part D, we want to determine the settlement of the pile cap. If a load of 3,600 kilonewtons is applied. So let's first determine our pile stiffness factor. So that's the modulus of the pile divided by the modulus of the soil multiplied by RA so going back to our information sorry this should be 2000 so AP is 2000 megapascals divided by 20 and we have solid piles so RA is just equal to 1 so this works out to be 100 and our length to diameter ratio 
That's 6 over 0 0.6. That works out to be 10. So now we can go to this chart here. So our K value is 10. And L on D is... Sorry, our K value is 100. And our L on D value is 10. So if we project across, that gives us an I value of approximately 1.85. So I is equal to 1.85 from the chart. So for a single pile, the settlement, settlement equation is equal to P over LES multiplied by I. Now P for a single pile is the total applied force divided by the number of piles. So that gives us 400 kilonewtons. This is the force that is acting on a single pile within our pile group. So that's 400 divided by 6 multiplied by 20 multiplied by influence factor 1.85. And this gives us a settlement of 6.17 millimeters. Now to find the settlement for the pile group, SG is equal to S multiplied by RS. So K as we determined earlier is 100. L on D is equal to 10. Our spacing divided by diameter, that's 3 divided by 0 0.6 which is equal to 5. So going to this table, we have a floating pile group. And we have 9 piles. K is 100. L on D is 10. S on D, or S on D is 5. So let's draw that again. So if you project these numbers across, this gives us an RS value of 2.49. So SG is equal to the settlement of a single pile, 6.17, multiplied by RS, 2.49. So therefore, the settlement for the entire pile group is 15.36 millimeters. And that's it for today's video. Hope this helps, guys.